Looking for the strange and the unusual? Well, you've come to the right place. I'm Shanaz and this is Culture Shock. Thailand, a lush and tropical Buddhist kingdom with an irresistible combination of natural beauty, ancient temples, renowned hospitality, and fascinating customs. I'm cruising down the glorious River Pai in search of a particular hill tribe called the Kayan Padong. They have this strange and ancient custom of wearing rings around their neck, and I'm really looking forward to meeting them. As I enter the village, I'm immediately struck by the strange and exotic beauty of the women. Rather than distorting or disfiguring the body as one might expect, the rings somehow give the women an odd yet graceful elegance. A sort of Audrey Hepburn quality, if you will. It's all one, right? It's all yeah. attached. It's all a coil. One piece. Like one piece. Yes. And how much does this weigh? Now, I have two kilo. I have maximum about five or six kilo. Wow, that's yes. really heavy. Yeah. <laughs> The long neck tribe's people are called Kayani and they're originally from Myanmar, which used to be called Burma. Now, in the past few decades, due to violent oppression from the brutal dictatorship in Myanmar, many have made the dangerous escape across the border into Thailand. Kayani girls begin wearing the rings at the age of five and add a new ring to their necks every year after. So next year you'll put a bigger piece? Next year we take that off yes. and chain new one, bigger. Longer one. A few years ago, anthropologists x-rayed some of these women and they found that their necks aren't actually stretched at all. In fact, it's the weight of these metal coils that weigh their collarbones down over time and deform them, producing the illusion of having long necks. The origins of the rings date back over 3,000 years when in the absence of law and order to protect their gold, the women would melt it down and coil it around their necks, arms and ankles. This way, when under attack, it was much easier to make a quick getaway with all their valuables. Nowadays, because of their terrible economic situation, to keep their tradition alive, the Kayani women wear brass rings instead of gold. Will it come off? Yes. I'm worried. Yeah. <laughs> they put it all over your head like that. Yes. And then they tighten it. How heavy is this? Because it feels really three heavy. Three kilo. This is three kilo. So this is what you're wearing. Yes. And this pushes your collarbone down. Yeah. And it goes around you. Wow. But it'll make me look beautiful and have a long neck. Just then, flocks of tourists descend on the village and start taking photos of the long neck women like an army of paparazzi. And the women respond, posing effortlessly, unfazed by all the attention, like it's totally normal for them. And now they've started shooting me, the tourists. They shoot anything. I've been taking pictures of me. Hey, I'm not a long neck. <laughs> you don't want to be photographed. So what is really going on here? I thought this was a remote and preserved ancient culture, not a mindless tourist trap. Well, it turns out it's not the tourists that are trapped here. The Thai government considers the Kayanis as refugees and does not grant them citizenship, passports, ID cards or access to any other parts of the country. Instead, they're forced to live in simple little villages like these, weaving their traditional fabrics, selling their postcards, handicrafts and folk music. So basically, they're wearing it in this village for the tourists. You can say like this only. Yeah. We don't want to lose. Yeah. But not force them to Not for You don't want to lose your tradition, yeah. but you don't want to force them yeah. to wear it. Later that day, I got the rare privilege to witness the Kayani get another ring added.
refugee camps in Thailand. Here at least they are allowed to make a living even though very meager and their cultural traditions are kept alive. And if the situation was okay in Burma right now, would you go back? If the situation changes in the morning, we will go back in the evening. Ever been invited to a banquet in honor of hundreds of wild monkeys hopped up on sugar and caffeine? Well, now you have. Coming up next.